Up to now, we've discussed perfect isolation of our transactions. We want our schedules to be serializable as if the transactions would be executed one after another. However, sometimes a little bit of inconsistency is acceptable if this yields an improved performance or concurrency. And to this end, SQL allows to set the desired level of isolation. Some degree of inconsistency may be acceptable for certain applications in order to gain concurrency and increased performance. So for instance, accepting inconsistent or dirty reads may reward us with increased concurrency. The general idea is that lowering the consistency guarantees leads to higher performance, more throughput. To this end, SQL allows to set the isolation levels. Up to now, we've considered only the isolation level serializable. This excludes dirty reads, non-repeatable reads, and it also excludes phantom rows. We've not yet discussed what phantom rows are. We will discuss them on the next slide. So serializability is the highest level of isolation. On the other hand, the lowest level of isolation is read uncommitted. So then we don't care, we allow dirty reads, non-repeatable reads, and phantom rows. In between these two, we have other isolation levels. Read committed prevents dirty reads. The isolation level repeatable read prevents dirty reads and prevents non-repeatable reads. What isolation levels you have available depends on your database management system. So you should really check depending on your database management systems what isolation levels are supported. For instance, Oracle does not support full serializability. So what is the phantom row problem? Let's have a look. We have two transactions. First, transaction one scans the relation R. So it looks over all the rows in the relation R and in order to do so, it obtains a lock on all the rows. Next, transaction two inserts a new row in the relation R. In order to do so, it obtains a lock on this new row and when it's done, it releases the lock on the new row. Next, Transaction 1 again scans the entire table R. And suddenly it sees an additional row, namely the new row inserted by transaction 2. So what happened here? The isolation is violated. This schedule is not serializable. We can not have this scenario where a second scan yields a different result if this schedule would be serializable. So our isolation is violated, and it is violated despite the fact that both transactions properly follow the two-phase locking protocol. So what's the cause of this problem? The cause of this problem is that the transaction 1 has locked only the existing rows in the table. So it cannot lock the new row because it's not yet there. So what's the solution for this? The solution is to use multi-granularity locking, locking the table instead of the rows, or to use declarative locking, so to use key range predicates for locking. Different database management systems will achieve the isolation levels in different ways. But let's discuss how we can achieve these isolation levels using locking. The basic idea is to use variations of the strict two-phase locking protocol. The isolation level read uncommitted, also called dirty read or browse, can be achieved by only acquiring write locks. So we don't acquire locks for read operations and it means that the rows can be changed by other transactions concurrently while we are reading. 
the isolation level read committed, also called cursor stability, can be achieved by acquiring the read logs only as long as the cursor sits on a particular row. So once we are finished reading this row, we immediately release the log for this row. The write logs are acquired as usual. So since we are immediately releasing the read logs, so we don't adhere to the strict two-phase locking protocol for the read logs, the rows may be changed during repeated reads. The next isolation level repeatable read can be achieved by following the strict two-phase locking protocol. But even if we follow the strict two-phase locking protocol, we can have phantom rows as we've seen. So if we execute an aggregation query on the same table twice, we may suddenly see new rows in this table the second time we execute this aggregation. Finally, the isolation level serializable can be achieved by a combination of strict two-phase locking and multi-granularity locking. Then we also don't have phantom rows anymore. SQL offers different commands for transaction control. In particular, it allows to choose the isolation level. The SQL standard supports the following commands for transaction control. We can set auto commit to on or off. If auto commit is on, then each query will be considered as a separate transaction. We can explicitly start a transaction, we can commit a transaction, or we can roll it back. Finally, we can also set the isolation level for this transaction. For many applications, the isolation level serializability is not really needed. So for many applications, a weaker isolation level suffices. And choosing a weaker isolation level is an important part of database tuning, because the weaker isolation level allows more concurrency, more performance for our queries.